NBC, Facebook, and even Fox News have decided to no longer run a, uh, a Trump campaign ad that had been widely criticized, not only factually incorrect, uh, but racist. CNN decided early on not to run the ad. The president was asked about it today. Here's what he said. I don't know about it. I mean, you're telling me something I don't know about. We have a lot of ads, and they certainly are uh, effective based on the numbers that we're seeing. Well, Mr. President, what if Bill said that as a Why did you like that ad? What were you well, to? a lot of things are offensive. Your questions are offensive a lot of times, so, you know. <laughs> Joining me now is CNN Chief Media Correspondent, host of Reliable Sources, Brian Selter. Brian, the idea that the president did not know about this ad, given the amount of TV he watches and cable news he watches, this ad has been widely discussed. Seems hard to imagine that he, this is the first he's heard of it. Yeah, even his presidential Twitter account shared the ad with millions of people. But its exposure on television was even more problematic because this ad was being broadcast on one of the most popular programs on television, Sunday Night Football on NBC. That created a severe backlash this morning, Anderson, and NBC quickly came out and said, whoa, something went wrong here due to the insensitive nature of the ad. It will not air anymore on NBC or on MSNBC, where it was also airing. But by then, frankly, the damage had been done. This ad had already been broadcast in front of millions of people. And the same thing was true over at Fox News. Uh, the, air, the ad had already aired on Fox and Fox Business more than a dozen times. Uh, then the head of ad sales of Fox came out and said, we're not going to show it anymore. That, of course, led to the question, does this mean the ad was too racist even for Fox News? Apparently the answer is yes. Uh, Brian, Brian Stelter, thanks. Back now with our, uh, our political team. Um, what, do you, uh, what do you make of the fact that Fox News chose not to run this ad? I mean, <coughs> I, mean I, I just think we've been punched numb. It's been punch numb. The idea that the President of the United States likes an ad, loves it, tweets it out, and it is so racist and so offensive that Fox News, no great friend of civil rights, can't even run it. And we act like that's just normal. Now we'll talk about, you know, Connecticut or something else. That is horrible. That is really, really bad. And, you know, we got young people tuning in for the first time in their lives to try to watch the politics and understand what's going on. And this is their first exposure to American politics, that the President of the United States is such a raving bigot that he likes stuff that cannot be shown to them on television. There's something wrong with that. Why don't you begin? So, so I just a quick, quick observation before I delve in there. You know, NBC quickly denounces the ad, but doesn't say a word about SNL taking on a combat-wounded, severely veteran. Kind of turns my stomach uh, a little bit there. Um, ad. So, you know, that, that's, yeah, do, I, I think... Do, you, know, do, 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 you, do you hold the President to a higher standard than NBC? No. Because I do. Yeah, I'm not, I said, first, first, first thing, let me talk about that first, right? So, that's, you know, they should have come out and condemned the Saturday Night Live piece. Agree. It was equally as offensive. Look, I, I'm not a fan of this ad. It's, it's a terrible thing to run. I've been talking about the economy. We should, be, we should be sticking on that message. And look, the caravan, let's just go back to talk about the caravan. The caravan itself was a great messaging piece. What the problem with the president is when he talked about birthright citizenship, it immediately made people think about, you know, go to a whole different place, right, in the ad. You go from the hordes at the gate shaking down the thing to, to kids being taken away from their parents, and, and a whole, it, it changed the discourse. So you think the birthright uh, citizenship was a mistake well, for I think, the, I think I think that it, was, it was something that, it, that you know, the president had these, these what visuals. Was good, right? you know, no, no, but I'm saying, I'm talking just about a campaign ad. Right. This, is, this is pure. Like, I'm not saying the Willie Horton ad was a great ad to run way back when. Was it effective? Yes. Was it the right thing to do? No. Right? Look, I mean, I, there's, there's two distinct pieces here. Look, look, look I, first of all, I, I disagree with you on, on both ends of it. I don't think the President of the United States demonizing this you know, band of refugees was great in the first place. It may have been good politics. I think it was, it was bad for the country. But I also think that th these things all tie together. And what's happening is the dominoes are falling so that our overall humanity, compassion, what makes us great as Americans is going down, 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 down. I don't think you can separate those two the way that you are. This, I think, I'm sorry. This is the closing ad of a, of a campaign that the president says has been about him, all about him. And networks can't run it. I mean, just think about that's that. That's bad. Networks cannot run it because they believe that it is too racist. I? And I think that's kind of stunning. I, I'm sort of with Van on this, which is, have we gotten to the point where this is just ho-hum now? I, uh, I, can I just, can I just uh, point out something that he said that I think is very important and illuminating and consistent with a pattern, which is he said, uh, well, you know, it, it may be tasteless or whatever the word is, just, but it's effective. Mm. It's effective. 
And that is the explanation we get for all kinds of things. He said to Leslie Stahl uh, when she asked him why he demonized uh, Dr. Ford or, or ridiculed her, he said, well, we wouldn't have won without that. Donald Trump has one test for all of this, which is, does it work? Yeah. Does it work? And he thinks that that works for him. I think he may find out tomorrow that yes. he kind of jumped the shark here and he went too far. Yeah, but among, that's what he thinks. But so it's not making about moral the, judgments. It's all about winning. What's so interesting about the evolution of this ad is that it started as a web video that he tweeted out. It was 53 seconds long. It wasn't a paid television ad. It, it was not going to be put in everyone's living room. And it got hammered in news coverage. It got hammered. And the Trump campaign adjusted to that because they took out the inaccuracies in trying to make a 30-second version of it to try to pass the smell test and get onto the broadcast. Uh, they attempted to make an adjustment, and it's still now being rejected. So they, they've taken two cracks at this ad, and it's not passing the smell test. My great hope on this is that tomorrow he will see the biggest smackdown because of the number of people coming to the polls by virtue of the fact that they're angry at the divisiveness of that ad and others, that ad being sort of the piece de resistance of exactly who he is. There's, you know, the, the never voted people and the infrequent voters, the numbers are through the roof. If you just, I mean, I looked at like Tennessee, 929% increase in people who have never voted. Infrequent voters, 691% increase. Young voters, 663% increase. They are reacting to something. They are reacting to the divisiveness, the hatred, the bigotry. And I'm, I'm hopeful they send a very no, powerful it's message. It's interesting because Trump, according to our White House reporters, did not like the kind of soft and fuzzy Morning in America ad that ran uh, because, A, it didn't have him in it, but, B, he, he just thought it wasn't punchy enough mm -hmm. and it wouldn't get people out to vote, whereas this ad probably is something if well, you are if, 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 if right. you are Donald Trump. Right, but, but, but again, we'll again, find again, out. again yeah. right, it, you have to look from a, from a political science standpoint, right? Not a, does it move the numbers? Right. Yeah. It moves the numbers, right? right? And also, I mean... Is it right to do? Different question. But Dave, I, I, we, my we, question we, is, yes, it did, there's no doubt that you had a slumbering Republican base. He started down this road. Yeah. He was rewarded of, by by rising numbers of uh, Republicans who said they were going to vote, who, they were going to participate. My question is, after the tragedies we saw, he seemed to, as I said yesterday, he went from a 10 to 11 thinking, I've got to regain the momentum. And I think in doing that, he's going to drive away some of these independent but, voters. But, but, but hasn't people... At what cost is ha it? Haven't, haven't a lot of people in the media been predicting that since the beginning? I mean, the, the first time he came down the escalator yeah, and, and made that speech, right. you know, and how many times have people said, oh, this is a tipping point of yeah. beyond this? Well, I mean, it's... that was the entire story of, of 2016, the entire story of his announcement in 2015 when he talked about a Mexican Cindy murderers and rapists uh, and their drugs. We thought uh, that was going to be a tipping point. We thought that white uh, uh, women, for instance, would behave much differently than they ended up uh, behaving in the 2016 election. And in some ways, we're making those same predictions now that they're going to behave differently. People need to vote.